Our next guest is an Emmy-nominated writer and director behind films such as Bridesmaids and Spy, as well as shows like Freaks and Geeks in The Office. He directed, produced, and wrote Welcome to Flatch, which premiered today on Fox, and he also produced Minx, which also premiered today on HBO Max. Let's take a look. Like when you give a pill to a dog, you dip it in peanut butter first. So my question is, what's our peanut butter? I'm sorry, are you waiting? It's nude men. <laughs> Did you say nude men? But not like a schwanz right in the face, you know? Classy, with your modern, you know, lady point of view. Are you mentally ill? You're the one who came up with the idea. No, that was a conversational bon mot. Please welcome to the show, Paul Feig, everybody. <laughs> See you, and you have brought us martinis to celebrate two shows. There on you the go. Air today. I got these out of Jeannie Pirro's uh, dressing room. Oh yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hope you left something. Uh, uh, leave a little money because she did. will hunt you down. Uh, <laughs> um, you actually, during the pandemic, you made a hundred cocktails, uh, a one a day. Yeah. Live streamed. Yep. Which was a lovely thing to do. Did you at some point though get a little tired of doing it? Never, oh, never wow. making cocktails. No, I, but I, I vowed at the beginning of the pandemic, I knew I wasn't a medical professional, so I had to do something. So I thought, oh, I'll make cocktails every day, five o'clock for 100 days in a row, no stop. And we uh, raised money for charity and all that and uh, made delicious cocktails every well, day. Well, you're very good at it. It's an excellent martini. Thank you so much. With my own gin, my Arding Stahl's gin. I have my own gin. Well, you dress like a man who should have his own gin. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You, um, so I want to talk about Minx first. That was the clip. Yeah. Um, so this is about the sort of launching a, uh, well, I guess you call it, what would you call this magazine? A woman's magazine? Well, it, it's, it's kind of a fictional retelling of the story of how Playgirl magazine got started. But, mm -hmm. uh, but with all new characters and everything, uh, Ellen Rappaport uh, created the show. And it's, you know, Jake uh, Johnson is so funny. It's literally the role he was born to play in uh, Ophelia Love you Bond. And it's just a really fun Funny show, takes place in 1971. Lots of laughs and tons of male nudity. Tons of male nudity. Tons of male nudity. Um, I should note, male nudity presented very matter of fact. I yeah. guess the way it would be if you were about to put it in a magazine. Well, that's the thing. We didn't want the show to be lurid, so it's about this. Uh, basically, Jake plays the publisher of a lot of naked magazines, but for women. So when you get there the first time, and she, you know, our star tours the place, it's just a bunch of people naked, standing around smoking cigarettes, waiting to do their job. So it's immediately not sexy. It's just like a workplace comedy. There you go. There you go. Uh, with and lots of dongs. Exactly. <laughs> lots of dongs. There it's like go. the Office with dongs. Um, <laughs> that's the pitch. That's the pitch. <laughs> what was it like when you went and pitched? Well, we, we drove around. Uh, Ellen had a trunk full of old Playgirl magazines. And we would show up with a giant pile, spread them out. Everybody loved to see those. Everybody had a yeah. great time. And we'd have a great pitch. And then we'd leave and go, like, well, they bought it. And then you get a call. Well, they don't want to do it because it's too yeah. whatever. And but they will buy the magazines. They will buy the magazines, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but eventually, HBO Max stepped up. And uh, we got to make the show. And it was just so much fun. You, uh, so you moved out to LA in the 80s? Yeah, 81, uh, to be a tour guide at Universal Studios. And how were you as a tour guide? Uh, I fell in Jaws Lake. Uh, did you really? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, we. If you ever been to on the tour, they have Jaws Lake, and you go out on this dock, and then it like tips, and then the shark comes out and does all this stuff. Well, this is '81, so some lady was wearing clogs, and the sh thing tipped, and her clog fell in the water. And so we come out, and she goes like, "My clog." So I go, "Oh!" So I clamber back out onto this dock, and I'm reaching out to get it, and the dock resets, and I go head first into the water as Jaws is backing up to reset. <laughs> so I almost got killed by Jaws in reverse. <laughs> Getting killed by a fake Jaws would be somehow less uh, dramatic. Yeah, yeah, that's just a funny death, and I don't yeah. want to have a funny death. <laughs> no, that's right. all I ask. Uh, so, uh, Flatch is uh, an adaptation yeah. of a British show, mm -hmm. and you also worked on The American Office. Yeah. And so, was that helpful, like going to that, going through that process again, and taking a beloved British property and, and making it, uh, adapting it to the United States? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because Flatch is based on a show called This Country, which was on BBC. And yeah, what we found out. Uh, on, on the office is that American audiences don't love rooting for terrible people as the lead characters, yeah. you know? And, um, and so, we, like, on that, 
the first six episodes they did on, on The Office, he was mean, but they didn't like it. And then the 40-year-old virgin came out and people go, oh, he's nice. So then we made him more well-meaning. <laughs> and this one is just great. It's just about these two cousins who live in this small town in the middle of Ohio and just about the people in the town. It's lovely, super fun, comfort food kind of show. And you pulled from your own small town experiences with Freaks and Geeks. So is that nice to return to that? Yeah, it's really fun. It's fun to write scripts because basically these two characters are so kind of arrested development that I can just bring up stories that I did when I was a kid. And one of the things I wrote this an episode is they started dance school. And I did that. I started a dance school in my, uh, in my garage and charged all the kids in the neighborhood a dollar. Yeah. And this was the dance I invented, man. Oh, I great. <laughs> Manage your expectations because here it comes. There oh you God. go. And within five minutes of the class ending, a bunch of older brothers came over and threatened to beat me up if I didn't give their money back. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, I'm surprised there hasn't been a class action. Yes. <laughs> but you did, when you first went to LA, you wanted, uh, you thought you'd be in front of the camera, right? Yeah, I went there to be an actor, and, and I was an actor. I was on a lot of, t I was a regular on five TV shows, and I was Mr. Poole on uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch for the first season. Wow. Yes, my and hostess is, if you remember that. And yeah. so when did the moment, when did it dawn on you that uh, your, your future path in Hollywood was gonna be behind the camera? Well, I always wanted to write and direct, and when we finished the first season of Sabrina, I was like, oh my God, it, you know, it was a hit show, so like, I made money, so I was like, I'm gonna take all my money and sink it into this independent film that I wrote and directed and starred in that I shot in six days and finished that with all the money I had in the world, and then they called me up and said, oh, we're not gonna bring you back to the show. So, <laughs> then I was out of work and out of money. Yeah. My wife was looking at me like, what did you just do? Uh, and I had a terrible year of just trying to sell that movie, couldn't get it anywhere, but during that time, then I wrote the script for uh, Freaks and Geeks. Uh, well, it certainly, I think, ended up being the perfect path for you, and it's so nice to have you here. Congratulations on two shows. Thank you, Seth. You guys, that's Paul Feig. Welcome to Flatch, it airs Thursdays on Fox and Minx is streaming on HBO Max. We'll be right back with more Late Night, everybody.